Hi, I'm Laura, and in this video I'm going to show you how we can perform sentiment analysis using natural language processing techniques and KDB.ai. If you wish to follow along and join in and run through the code yourself, you'll need to do two things. The first will be to sign up for your own cloud instance. So if you open up a browser, go to KDB.ai, click on sign up and complete the registration form then you'll receive an email with a link that will be a link to your own kdb.ai vector database. Once you've logged in, you'll be presented with this screen and you'll need to note your endpoint URL and your API keys as you'll need those to connect to your vector database later on. Second thing you'll need to do will be go to the learning hub on the same site, scroll down to samples and then click on sentiment analysis. And this will take you to our sample page where you can access our GitHub repo and either download or clone the repository so that you have your own copy of the Jupyter Notebook that will run through during this example. So before we jump into the sample itself, let's discuss briefly what is sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is sometimes known as sentiment mining or opinion mining, and it's used to determine or extract the emotional tone or the sentiment um, conveyed within a piece of text. The goal of sentiment analysis is to categorize the sentiment conveyed into three categories, so positive, negative, or neutral. And some techniques might go further and give you a more granular category, such as strongly negative or slightly positive. Um, but for the purposes of the demo today, we're just going to stick to the main three. So what are we going to do in the, in the example today? The first thing we'll need to do will be ingest some text and we're going to use reviews of Disneyland resorts from across the world. So there should be plenty of different opinions and sentiments expressed within that. The next thing to do will be to perform sentiment analysis on that using a pre-trained model for sentiment classification. We'll create vector embeddings using a sentence transformer model and then we'll index those into our vector database kdb.ai. Once we've done all this, we will query the database to try and determine the general sentiment around different aspects of the resorts, and then we'll be able to visualize that data. So now if we jump over to our Jupyter Notebook, we can start working through this example. The aim of this tutorial is to show that with KDB AI, we can easily search for any sort of topic, keyword, sentiment, um, and retrieve customer queries that fit that query. The first step we'll need to do will be some setup, and this will involve importing some libraries. So you can see here that we're importing pandas and tqgm. tqgm is a library that will show a progress bar for loops, and we'll see that in action later on when we're running through our reviews. The next section imports our pre-trained models from the transformers library, and this allows us to classify our sentiments. Matplotlib will be used for visualization, and you'll see that in the final section of the demo, and sentence transformers is the library that will allow us to create vector embeddings for our text. Finally, we'll import what we need for kdb.ai. So most importantly to note this KDB AI client as KDB AI. And then we'll set some environment configuration just to help us view our outputs in a nice clean way. And then we're ready to get started ingesting some data. So as I mentioned earlier, the data that we're gonna to use today is some reviews of Disneyland resorts from Paris, California, and Hong Kong. The data set is free to download from Kaggle and it contains around 42,000 reviews now we don't need that many reviews for the purposes of our demo, so we can take a look and see how many reviews there are for each resort or each branch as we've called it here. And we have a good amount for each branch. So if we take 50 um, for each, then we'll show what we need to show without actually impacting on our performance. So the next task is to perform sentiment analysis on the reviews that we have. And just to note here that the model that we're using is coming from the Hugging Face Transformers library. And the link is here if you want to go um, to that website and find out more about that library and how it works. So above we imported the tokenizer and the pre-trained model. And below here you can see that we're specifying that we want to use the Roberta model. So what the tokenizer does is it breaks up the text into individual words or units to prepare the text for future processing or in our case for embedding. Now the Roberta model is a fine-tuned model that's built on top of a sentiment analysis model called BERT and it's being used here to perform some natural language processing and classify our reviews into three sentiment labels, positive, negative and neutral. The next thing to do is to pass the reviews through a sentiment analysis pipeline using our Hugging Face Transformers library and then we will create a function that will add a label and a score to the reviews that will help us interpret the sentiment expressed within each. 
So now we can test this out um, by getting the sentiment for just one review. And if we take a random review here and run that through our function, we can see that it's been assigned a very positive score. And this seems, this seems sensible when we read the, the result here as well. So now if we continue with the rest of the data set, we can run each review through our sentiment function. And you can see the TQDM library here in action. So there are some limits with the Roberta model, um, but we've added in some error catching into this function just so that we can ignore any reviews that it doesn't work for. Um, there could be some issue with it, it might be too long, um, but that's okay for the purposes of our demo anyway. So we can see that it's finished looping through the reviews. And if we want to view those results, we can see that what it's produced is just the review ID, the label and the score. So what we'll wanna do is add these, add these results to the original review so that we can see text alongside the label and the score that it's been assigned. And if we want to visualize this, we can do. What we've done here is map the labels determined from the sentiment analysis against the rating that the customers gave in their review. And this seems sensible. So the higher ratings that were given seem to correlate with the more positive results and the sort of neutral or negative ones seem to have lower ratings. So that seems quite sensible. So the next step will be to analyze this data further. And to do that, we're gonna use our vector database, kdb.ai. In order to be able to add this data to kdb.ai, we need to create vector embeddings of the reviews. So to do this, we're gonna use this mini LML6 embedding model, and we're going to apply that to our review text, return the original data as the metadata alongside the newly created embeddings. So you can see that we've added the label, the score, the rating, and then we have the embeddings attached as well. So now we want to store these embeddings in kdb.ai. So you'll need to grab your endpoint URL and your API key that we got at the start. And you can do this one of two ways. So you can assign these environment variables on your workstation, or if you don't want to do that, you can run this cell and it'll prompt you for your URL and then your API key. I've already done this off camera, so I can just run session and this will automatically connect. And I'm now connected to my vector database. So next we define our table schema and what we have here is the format. So you can see that we assign our metadata columns first. So we have branch as a string, score as a float, rating as an integer and so on. And then we need to give some information about the embeddings. In particular, the index that we want to use. In this case, we're using HNSW or Hierarchical Navigable Small Worlds, which is a type of nearest neighbor search using a graph index. Because what we're really doing under the hood is a similarity search. For a given query. So we want results that are related to a given query or a given topic. Once we've defined our schema we create the table. First making sure that the table doesn't already exist and then we add our embedded data to our table in kdb.ai using table.insert. So to verify that this has been successful we can run table.query and this should return the exact same data frame that we had above. The only difference now is that we're querying it from kdb.ai. So we can see here that that's the same. So now we move on to the queries. The first thing you want to do is create a function that will take our input query and embed the search term, perform the search in kdba.ai, and then return the results to us in a pandas data frame. And we're going to use the first query as are customers satisfied with food at the park? And we're requesting 25 results. Now we want to investigate this a little bit further. So we'll want to group these reviews by branch. And we can create a function here that will store a count of each of the sentiments and then use a group by to help us gain insight into the general sentiment expressed for each of the different branches. So we can see here that we've got a couple of negative results for California um, and more negative results for Paris, but an easier way to interpret this would be to visualize them. So we've created a function here that will plot this sentiment and we'll give it a new query as well. So we'll ask, what did guests think of the rides and attractions? So we can see we've got overwhelmingly positive results. We've got a couple of negative ones um, just for Disneyland Hong Kong, but it looks like California and Paris have had a clean sweep. 
So now maybe we want to combine all of our functions into one so that we can pass a query and it will run through each step and plot our results so that we can easily visualize the sentiments. For this one, we'll try our food query again. And we can see straight away that Disney California has the most positive um, reviews for food um, and that Paris has the most negative. We can try another query. So what did the guests think of the staff? So we can see here that Paris has the most positive results, but it also has some of the most negative results. And we can caveat these results with the fact that we only took 50 reviews for each branch. So if we had used the, the whole data set of 42,000 reviews, we would of course get more meaningful results into the sentiments expressed and might get different results. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with all the latest from KX.